The basic look of today's modern locomotive has essentially been unchanged for more than a quarter of a century since the introduction of the Comfort Cab design in the late 1980s. Predating this visual change by only a few years was the beginning of a massive evolution under the hood and in the cab to modernize the electrical systems that operate and control a locomotive. Electromotive Division's 60 Series and General Electric's Dash 8 Series both debuted in the early 1980s, introducing microprocessor control to their product lines. Electronics since then have become better, faster, smaller, and cheaper, which has allowed the builders to increase the usage of computers and integrated electronics in almost every part of the locomotive. This also has allowed builders and railroads to eliminate extra equipment such as the distributed power and end of train control units that typically were mounted on top of the control stands or elsewhere in the cab. Information from these devices has been placed into the main display screens on the locomotive's control stand. In the last two decades, a local area network, also known as LAN, has been employed inside new locomotives, allowing systems to easily talk to one another directly or via other systems connected to the network. A local area network is an interconnected network of cabling that connects various devices in a specific area. Builders briefly used fiber optics to create networks on locomotives, but eventually reverted back to copper wire. The network allows the locomotive to monitor thousands of parameters feeding the information back to the necessary systems within the unit. EMD's FIRE, which is Functionally Integrated Railroad Electronics, screens, and GE smart displays located in front of the engineer are actually self-contained computers and coordinate locomotive systems, support systems, and third-party equipment. A second display is added when additional equipment such as distributed power is installed to allow for more information to be displayed simultaneously during operation. In the event of a failure of one of the displays, the information can be consolidated on one screen. Railroads also have the option of placing display screens on the conductor's desktop on the opposite side of the cab, which typically features a limited amount of control to certain features with the remaining information presented in read-only format. The increase in the last two decades of wireless communications has enabled locomotives to keep in contact with the railroad or locomotive builder 24-7 if necessary. This connectivity allows the locomotive to report in real-time alerts, failures, or other preset parameters. Builder-installed systems such as EMD's IntelliTrain and GE's RailConnect 360 monitoring and diagnostics primarily monitor the various aspects of the engine, control system, and related components. Third-party systems from companies such as Ytronics, Ionics, which is I-O-N-X, Latlon, Motive Power, and ZTR can provide similar monitoring while also providing additional features that complement EMD's or GE's offerings. These builder and third-party systems can monitor such things as fuel level, brake pipe pressure, throttle position, train location, engine state, train overspeed, impending dangerous weather in the direction of the train's movement, potential track issues, and wireless event recorder downloading. Access and notification to the railroad or builder is typically available in the form of web access, smartphone apps, email, or text alerts. Many of the third-party systems can also be installed on older locomotives without the microprocessor-based system. A form of cruise control has also been introduced within the last two decades that can operate the train automatically across the territory. Information such as the train's loads, empties, length, and tonnage are entered into the computer and integrated with the track profile, speed limits, slow orders, etc. of the territory along with the destination to allow the train to operate itself in the most efficient manner possible as it moves across that line. Intervention by the engineer is rarely needed when the train is operating on clear signals. New York Air Brakes Leader and GE's Trip Optimizer are two such systems in use today by railroads in North America. And I can vouch for that firsthand because I used to hear it every morning when they were dispatching the 11Z out of Binghamton. With the implementation of positive train control, the equipment needed to operate PTC is adding another level of complexity to the existing electronics on a diesel locomotive. As time goes on, new locomotives will certainly become more intelligent, allowing for greater productivity, utilization, and less downtime. But you still need people on board them. Say no to unmanned trains.